So what we're going over today are updatable BAQs. Uh, and give me a, a second here because with everything up on one screen, it's going to be a pain to do this. Uh, there we go. All right. Trying to have my Word document and the control panel and everything else open. Woohoo! Okay. So if you're not familiar, uh, updatable BAQs work just like BAQs, except you can actually update information, which is kind of cool. Uh, so you can use these to update data in the database without having to go through the entry screen, so to speak. Now that means do be careful because obviously you're updating data in the screens without going through all the entry screens. So you may run into problems where there are certain fields that are required so that you can get those key uh, bits of information that are needed for each of the tables that you're querying. So it's not just a free for all. You do still have to follow some rules while you're doing this. Uh, in order to do updatable BAQs, you do need the security for BAQ advanced user, and that's under user security maintenance. It's one of the check boxes there. So as long as you've got BAQ advanced user, you can start doing updatable BAQs. And as far as I know, uh, updatable BAQs are allowed inside the cloud as well. This isn't just an on-prem item. And with, uh, with the updatable BAQ, you can not only edit, you can actually also add and remove it records if you want to. So like I said, pretty powerful when you get there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna start up BAQ here. I just got a tile for it. Uh, I shortened the name from business activity query to BAQ so that I could fit it in a little small tile, but it just activates business activity query. If you go to menu search, you could search for query and you'll see business activity query. That's the fastest search I've been able to come up with for that. So the first thing I need to do is I need to find my query ID. So I'm going to call this emug uh, orders because the first one we're going to do is just for orders. And then later on, we'll come back and do a little bit more work with stuff. So we'll call this our updatable orders BAQ. Now, I typically always check the shared in all companies. If you're not familiar with it, shared means that this query is available to other users. If you don't check this, then the query is only available to yourself. All companies means that this query is available across companies. So I can query inside of Epic 01, Epic 02, uh, all the different companies, this query will be available. That's not to be confused with cross company. Cross company means that this query will run for the data uh, against all your companies. If this is unchecked, whatever query, whatever company you're in, that's the company that will be filtered when you run this query. If you check this, then it takes that company filter off. So be careful about using this cross company and, and the difference between cross company and all companies. Now to make a BAQ updatable, da -da -da -da, check the updatable box. There are some extra steps beyond that, uh, but that's the basic one that we need to do is make sure that that checkbox is checked for updatable. Then I'm gonna come over to query builder. And just like any other query, you just start putting in your uh, tables that you want. So I'm gonna, Put my filter in for order and i'll double click on the order head table that's going to be the query that i want to work with first now for my uh display fields i'm going to come in go to order head and i want my open order my company my order number my customer number my po number my order held uh, my request date down here, my FOB, my ship via code, terms code. And then I want to look for my bill to customer number and ship to customer number, just so that I can show you those bits of information. And ship to custom, I probably should have sorted alphabetically because I'll never find it in this list. All right, let me sort alphabetically here real quick. So we can just quickly jump to the S's and ship to custom there we go and i'm just going to shorten this up a little bit so it's not so long ship to custom that should be fine so these are the bits of information that i'm going to display uh, when i run my query now the key for doing an updatable baq is going to this update tab up here so i go to update and by default, it does say allow new record. 
So you can actually say, do you want the user to be able to add new records or not? You can turn this off if you don't want it. And then allow multiple rows to be updated at the same time. So when the user edits records, can they edit multiple records and then do one save, or can they do one at a time? Typically, I like letting them update multiple rows at the same time because kind of the purpose behind this is to let people edit things in a faster fashion. So if I want to be able to edit two or three records, then save them, I can do that. So I'm giving kind of a quicker interface. Granted, it's kind of a slimmed down interface because I'm using the BAQ interface. Uh, and later on, I'll show you the dashboard for it. So again, do be careful because you're not seeing all the fields. And if you do try to show all the fields, that's going to be a really long row of information that somebody has to go across. You're probably better off going back to the entry screen for that. Now, the next thing I want to do is what are, oh, yay, thank you for having driver updates. What columns do I want to be able to update? And you can select these individually and say these are the individual columns I want to update. You can also check this checkbox up here on the column header, automatically selects all of them. So you can say what columns are actually available to be updated. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select all of them, but then I'm going to uncheck order number, bill to customer number, and ship to customer number, because we're going to set those a little bit different. Epicor is actually going to set the order num for us. I don't necessarily want my user typing that order num in, so that's why I'm not getting it updatable. And then my bill to and my ship to, I'm actually going to show you how to default that to the customer number. So when I first create an order, uh, it's going to default those two values to the customer number. And we'll show you how to do that with formulas inside of there. Now, something nice to notice over here, what are the columns that are mandatory? So Epicor points this out to you so that you can make sure you've got everything available to the users. Maybe you need to enforce some rules or something. Uh, this way it's showing you what are the mandatory fields that you have to be able to uh, do in order to add those records or update those records. So our next step, we're going to go over to our update tab and go over to update processing. Now this Fred, you have a question oh. regarding the BAQ special permissions from Arno Butler. Uh, just a second, because I don't have the questions up here. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, the question was, do all users that want to update those have special permissions or only the BAQ creator? Gotcha. Only the BAQ creator needs those permissions to do the advanced uh, BAQ designer. So when you're creating the BAQ, that's what needs that security permission. Uh, the people that are using the BAQ uh, do not have to have special rights. All right, so I'm over on my update processing. And typically, you'll want to do a BPM update, which means it's going through the BPM objects to do the updates. Now, you can do a Service Connect workflow if you need to. Uh, and in fact, if you're going to be updating, let's say, by changing one record, you've got multiple processes that need to run. So maybe when I add an order or I change a customer, emails have to be sent out and some other things. You can do that with Service Connect. Depending on what you're doing, you can also do that with BPMs. So I could say, if a new record's added, notify a CSR to uh, do a credit check on the customer or things like that. If a territory needs to get set, go and set the territory. So you can do those types of things with BPMs as well. Uh, if you've got your Service Connect workflows already built, uh, you can activate them, but I typically like the BPM update. It tends to work a little bit uh, more smoothly for what I'm doing. And most people that I work with don't have Service Connect installed. So it's the way that I end up doing things. Now, I want to set my business object that's going to be used for this update. So I'll click on my business object here. And that brings up a list of objects that can be used for the tables that I've got in my query. So Epicor already chose uh, or limited the list of objects for me based on my query. That's pretty nice of it. Now I'm going to use the sales order. And you'll notice that the update method automatically selected update ext. That's the method that you're looking for when you want to use your uh, updatable BAQs, is this update ext. That's the method that uh, the BAQs are going to call. So if you end up calling a method, or I'm sorry, if you end up calling a business object and that method isn't in there, you might need to look for a better uh, business object to use. 
Now you could also select a specific business object if you wanted to. I, I, I like the ones that Epicor has, keeps me from having to monkey things around too much. So I'm going to choose my sales order object here and I'll click okay. And I'll give it just a few seconds here. And then you'll notice it fills in. The business object is the ERP sales order. My update method is the update EXT. And then over on the right is the selection of tables that I can use, uh, that I can update. Now, if I'm going to be updating multiple tables, you'd want to select multiple tables inside of here. And you can see what tables you actually have access to inside of that business object. Now, I'm just gonna work with order head for this one. So that's the only one that I've got checked. And then down below, I can see what my mappings are, what are the key fields, and what is required inside of those. So again, it's just providing you feedback so that you can understand what do you need to provide to your users so that uh, they can update or interact with this BAQ properly. And setting the BAQ up is actually what makes the dashboard set up properly. So it's very important to get this BAQ correct from the start. Uh, so what we're going to do, 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 do is I'm going to come into my expression editor down here, because remember I didn't set a value or I didn't allow the build to custom and the ship to custom to be edited. So I can set an expression for those guys. I can come in and I can open this up. Here's my data set fields. So these were defined by my display properties. And what I want to look at, I'm going to come down to my order head custom and you'll see in the editor, I've got a value tt result dot order head custom. So I can either use that and copy it around, which I will when we do multiple updates, but I can also come down to do, 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 do my build to custom and I can wipe this out. So it says tt result dot order head underscore bt custom. I'm going to delete that. And then up in this query or up in this window here, I'm going to try and expand it so that you can see more here. There we go. And I'm going to say I want my order head custom. I'll just double click on that, fills it in. And then I'll come down to ship to custom. Really, I'll click on it. There we go. I'll wipe this out and I'll double click order head custom. Now I could have copied the value from order head custom and pasted it in. Either way works. As well, if you needed to do any formulas, uh, for example, maybe you wanted to create an address, a compound address field. Uh, you could use the formulas over here to concatenate those together or calculate a value. Those are all still available to you. So we'll just hit check syntax. I get the lovely chimes. My syntax is okay. Do not forget to hit save. Uh, just like Bruce showed you before, if you if you forget to hit that new field or you hit forget to hit save, you're going to exit this window and your changes aren't going to be there. So I want to make sure that I hit save and then I'll close this window down. So now I've got my information in here and everything. You'll come down and you'll see on the expression, my build to custom is mapped over to my order head custom. My ship to custom is mapped over to my order head custom. So I don't have to prompt the user for those two fields. I'm just going to fill them in with the values from uh, the actual custom field. So now I've got everything done. At this point, I can go ahead and hit save. That'll save my query. I'm an advocate of save early, save often. Don't lose your values. Uh, that way, in case something does happen, uh, for example, there's a huge wind gust and you lose power in your building, at least you've got the information saved to the database. You don't lose uh, all the work that you just did. Those wind gusts rarely happen, but boy, when they do, you don't want to deal with them again. So now, just like a normal BAQ, I'd come over to analyze. This is where I can work with my BAQ. Now, on the bottom here, We've got our analyze and our test buttons like we normally do, but you'll notice test is grayed out. And that's because this is an updatable query. So instead of doing a test where you only get the values, we've now got buttons enabled over on the right for get list, update, and get new. So we can actually call those methods on the BPM, so to speak. So you can still do the analyze. I'll do that. It says my syntax is okay. Awesome. I'll click on my get list. And this is equivalent to what you used to do with the test button. Now I get a warning, this operation may cause data to update in the database. That's because this is an updatable BAQ. Although I'm doing a get list because it's an updatable BAQ, there is potential to be updating the database. 
Epicor wants to warn you about that in case you accidentally clicked it, at least think about what your query is doing. Now you can check the box to say, don't show this again. I prefer to leave it on so that I get that reminder. Okay, it was what I'm doing good. Did I click the wrong button? I can always hit no. I'm okay, so I'm gonna hit yes. And this gets me a list of my orders inside of company Epic 06. Because again, we aren't doing a cross company uh, BAQ, so we're limited to the company I've logged into Epic 06. I get my 343 records. I'm gonna sort by order number. I probably should have done that inside my display fields. And then I'll cruise all the way down here. And you can see some test records that I did when I was testing before. Now, if I want to, I can edit a field. And this is a little bit not intuitive, at least to me, uh, kind of threw me off. Although it looks like you can click in the field and you can type stuff, once you try to type, you really can't. What you need to do is actually double click on the row. And I'm gonna double click on the header for the row over here, this little gray area. So I'll double click on that. That brings up a dialogue that lets you edit the fields. So you do have to double click in order to edit things. So let's say I wanna make my ship date, uh, we'll make that the 19th instead of the 31st, um, and I'll change my PO instead of 11 to 12. When I hit OK, my row, I'm gonna click off my row here, becomes yellow. That indicates that I've got a changed row, but my changes haven't been updated to the database yet. So if I wanna update the database, I click the update down here. Now again, I get that operation can cause data updates in the database. Do you want to continue? Well, since I hit the update button, yes, I do want to continue. So I'll go ahead and click yes. That will save the information out to the database. Now, when I do that, I like to hit the refresh. Whoops, I shouldn't have hit refresh. I should have gone to my get list. My bad, I'm used to being in the, in the dashboards. So I'll do get list. Yes, go ahead and pull it again. I'm going to sort by orders, scroll all the way down. I should just grab the thumb, I'm silly over here. And you'll see, here's my record. It's changed my date to 819, and my PO now says 812 at the end. So it did go ahead and update the database. So pretty easy uh, way to get into a query and be able to enter that information. Now, if I wanted to add a new record, I can click this Get New button. Again, I get the warning. Yes, I want to update fields in the database, and again, it's a little not necessarily intuitive interface because I see a blank row down here. And you would think I could come in and I could start typing. But again, if I hit my keys on my keyboard, nothing's going in. You have to double click any row that you want to edit. So as long as you remember, whether it's a new or an update, you always wanna click that information or double click the row so that you can edit the information. Now I'm going to type in custom 24. Realize here we're dealing with the actual number not the customer ID. And that's because that number is the key field. So editing some of your information, you may need to know the actual numbers behind things as opposed to knowing the IDs that could cause an issue for you. I'm just gonna give this a, date, uh, a PO, uh, the year is 20, 08, 12, and then I'll call this 001 so that I've got it. I can put the order on hold, my ship via, I can do for the 3rd of September, my freight on board, I'll type in as factory. And again, this doesn't have a dropdown. So you do have to know what your codes are for the FOB, the ship B and the terms. Um, so in some ways, doing the uh, entry screen may be a lot better because you'll have your dropdowns. Uh, but again, if you're doing a dashboard, you might be able to tie those into dropdowns as well. So I'll go ahead and hit okay here. I'm gonna click off that row and you can see that that row is also yellow, meaning I haven't updated the database yet. So I still need to come down to my update, go ahead and update the database. I'm going to not refresh, I'll hit the get list again. There we go, I'll order by order number, scroll down to the bottom and you'll notice now I've got an order number. Also, my bill two and my ship two cost numbers are already set to 24 and that's from that expression. Now from the BAQ, I can still right click on the order number, do an open with, and I'm just going to open it with sales order tracker. And that's gonna take just a second to open that up. 
And if it opens up on another screen, I will bring it over to this one. Make sure that oh, it didn't open up. For that, Fred, you have a question from Mike McWilliams. Is it possible to use multiple business objects for one updatable BAQ? Uh, I may need to defer to others in the audience, but as far as I know, you're only allowed one uh, business object per BAQ. So you can't use multiple objects to, to update different tables inside of the same BAQ. And the reason for that is the information needs to be transacted with the database. And so it's wrapped around just a single business object update. And I'm not aware of any plans to allow for that in the future, but there could be. Anybody have different experience from that? Okay. So I opened up sales order tracker. I could have opened up sales order entry as well. But you'll notice I've got my order number here. I've got my PO, my order date. So all the information is being filled in. No tricks, nothing up my sleeve uh, as far as working this. It works just like if I would have entered the information inside of the data entry screen. I'm just dealing with a smaller subset of the data. So if you don't need all of these fields, maybe doing uh, an updatable dashboard is good for this. Uh, it's also a good way to just make things go a little bit quicker if you don't need all this extra information on here, or if you're needing to update several things at one time, maybe you need to put six orders on hold. You could just come down to your BAQ, go to this hold order, you double click on each item, click the uh, put order on hold. Uh, let's put this order on hold. So that's 5390. We'll update 5391 and we'll update 5392. Hit okay, do the update, update all that data, that's fine. Sort by order. I'm going to come down here. 5390, 91, and 92 are now on hold. And just to verify that, I'll hit the get list so that it always refreshes the data. Scroll down to 5390. 91 and 92 are now all on hold. So very easy to update the information kind of in bulk if you need to. Uh, now do keep in mind, if you try to update a record and somebody else updated it before you, you'll get that standard error message that uh, the record's been updated by another user you need to refresh. So you'd need to click that get list again. Now something I did notice, uh, if I did my, my first try at doing this, I actually had order head and order detail tied together. I was only showing order head fields. So I was getting duplicate rows because I'd get uh, one for each order detail line that I had as well. And if I edited a record, when I did the update, I would see that the one record I had was updated, but the second line or third line for that same order head wouldn't have updated in this view until I click the get list. So that's why I kind of also got in the habit of clicking the get list to make sure everything refreshed. And it's just because Epicor knows you updated this row in the grid. It doesn't know that that row is also tied to these other rows in the grid because those are the order detail lines. So you may, depending on how you do your joins, you may need to click that get list to see the results if you've got those duplicate rows because of a join like that. So just keep that in mind. Now, the other thing I'd like to bring up, even though it's not part of actually doing a, uh, an updatable BAQ versus regular BAQ, do make sure that you export your BAQ for source control. Um, and you can do that under Actions, Export BAQ. It will export it as an XML file, I believe. Uh, and then you can put that into your source control system so that you've got it in case something happens. Uh, let's say you're in your development environment, database gets corrupt because somebody went in and wiped out all the records, they ran a SQL query or something, you can still get that BAQ back and put it in. And you can also track changes against that. So it's always good to have a backup copy of your BAQ and be able to track that history. So now uh, let's do where we could actually update or put multiple records in here. So I'm going to come in, do a second BAQ. We'll call this emug order detail. If I could spell today, order DTL, we'll do this updatable order DTL. And again, I'll do shared, all companies, updatable. I'll come over to query builder, phrase build, and I'll get my order head, my order detail. And that, of course, nice enough to put that join in for me. I've gotten in the habit, I just like to click 
and make sure that the join is company to company, order num to order num, because depending on the tables that you add in, uh, it may join on a default join. You may be looking for a different type of join. So it's always good to double check that join when you drop a record on or drop a table on. Um, so now I'm going to come over to my display fields and uh, I'm gonna put in for my order head, uh, I went alphabetic, so of course that's gonna make things a little bit wacky there. Um, for my order head, I want my company and my order num, company, order num, and for my order detail, I want my company, order num, order line, uh, let's get our part num, line description, inventory unit to measure, my dock unit price, there you are, and my selling quantity, which I think is actually my order quantity. I think I just mistyped that, there we go. Um, so that gives me my display fields that I want to work with. So now I'm going to go over to my update tab. I'm making sure I've got a BPM update going on. I'll click on my business object. And again, I'm using the same uh, type of things. So I'm going to choose my ERP sales order. Now you'll notice because we added order detail, we've got a few more objects in here because these are tied to the what's available in the order detail table. So depending on what all you've got in your query, the list of business objects is going to change based on whether you've got more or less different types of tables in here. So just be aware of what all's going on. I'll click OK. I'll let this fill in. Do, 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 do. Just takes a couple seconds. And you'll notice because both the order head and order detail have display fields, both of those tables are checked by default. So I could update both those tables inside of the same updatable BIQ. Uh, I also forgot to go under general properties. I forgot to check my allow multiple row update there. Kind of got stuck on one item and forgot to check all the other things that I needed to do here. So I'm also going to check all my fields to be updatable. So I can update everything that I, I need inside of here. Let's go over to, do, 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 do. I'm trying to remember if I needed to do anything in here. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, so we do want to connect our order num and our company fields from our order head to our order detail. So that they're tied together there. So I'm actually going to come in over BPM processing, go to expression editor, and my order head company, I'm actually going to set to be my order detail company. So I'll come in here, wipe this out, go to my order detail company, just double click, and now it's set to the order detail company. And I'll do the same on the order num. Order detail, order num. Double click, check syntax, lovely chimes. Don't forget to hit save. I've done it enough while I was trying to do this demo together that I have remembered that for the rest of my life. And on my general properties here, I'm going to uncheck that my order head company and my order head order num are updatable, okay, because I'm getting those set by the expression. So I'll go ahead and save this here. I'll come over to analyze. I'll just check my syntax. Syntax is okay, awesome. I'll do my get list. I'll say okay because uh, it's not going to update any data right now. And then I can scroll down through here and I can see my various orders. Now orders that don't have lines because I did a join aren't going to show up in here. But I can go ahead, let's say on 5322, I wanna add a new line. So I can say get new. And then I have to double click on this row in order to edit it. So my order is 5322. Now my line back here was one, so I'm going to change this to be line number two. Be careful about not doing duplicates. Uh, let's set this to 001 MP cons, and I'm just going to put in Fred's test part. Unit to measure will be each's, my doc unit price. If I can hit a period instead of a comma, we'll make it set for 350, and we'll order five of those. I'll hit okay. Now if I get off that row, You'll see it's in yellow. Hit the update, yes. And then let's scroll all the way to the bottom again. We were on 5322. You'll notice we now have a line two 
in here. And if I open with Sales Order Tracker, we now have two lines in here. And if I go over to lines, you'll see the, the description is Fred's test part. Unit price is 350. Um, and did I miss up my selling quantity? I must have missed my selling quantity. I thought I'd put in four. That or I chose the wrong field in the BAQ. Okay, our quantity's four here. We'll refresh this. And our quantity's four. So I must have hit uh, the wrong key. Watch in the video, you'll be able to see what I screwed up. Yay. Uh, so it should update all of the fields that we had in here. So that's how you get updatable BAQs. So now we want to get to an updatable dashboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize my BAQ here. I'm going to close my sales order tracker. And I'm just going to go to dashboards. Now, if you do your menu search, you can search for dashboards. It's under executive analysis uh, and a few other places. I just made a short tile so that I can quickly get to it. So first off, I want to give this a dashboard ID. So let's call it emug dash updatable. Uh, we'll just call it orders. Doo -doo -doo. New record. Yes. We'll give it a caption of updatable orders. Updatable orders. We'll give it availability to all companies. So that means this dashboard can be run in any of the companies. Enable refresh all. Then I'll flip over to my dashboard, and this is where I need to start assigning my queries. So I'll come over to a new, new query. And my first query, let's go ahead and bring in our order head. So I'll bring in my orders. And let's just call this orders on our caption. Auto refresh on load. And I want to add in a couple publish items. And I'll use those published because I'm later going to add in our order detail query. And I'll create a link between the orders and the order detail uh, views inside of my dashboard. So I'm going to want a uh, company and order num to be published out so that I can use them. And I'm going to publish to the title my order number so that people know where I'm at. And I'll click OK on this. Choink. There we go. So I've got my orders in here. If I hit refresh and I select an order, you'll notice my title changes to order number 5002. So I can easily uh, navigate the orders if I select different order, 5006. Okay. So now let's add in our second query. So I'll come in, do a new, new query. I'm going to search for my emug queries and bring in my order detail. And I'll just change this caption to order detail. Again, allow the auto refresh on load. And for this guy, I'm going to go over to the filter and I'm going to set up the filters so that it uses from the order head query to filter the order detail query. So I'm going to say my order head company from the query that I'm in is going to be equal to that published value company. And I should have a second one in here. It's not letting me do it. You ever have one of those days? Let's click OK. If it doesn't like that, I will come back. Come on. Got to right click on the right thing. Properties. Filter. Uh, that's my summary. And I think that's actually what I wanted to do was my summary, and I did it on the query. Yeah, it's going to be one of those days. Okay, let's do order num equal to order num. Do, 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 order num. There we go. And I'm going to come up to my query properties. We'll take this filter. Now it lets me do two of them. Of course you do. So I just had to go out, come back in, and now it refreshed everything so I can set both of those. So I'll come over. I'll uh, do the filter at the query level instead of at the summary level. Welcome to live demos. It's so much fun some days. And we can get rid of this guy. Delete, I wanna delete that row. Yes, okay. So now I've got my uh, filters going on. 
So let's expand this guy up a little bit so you can see more of what's going on here. And as I select different orders, so I can select 5003, my title changes, I get my one line item. Uh, if I select 5006, it refreshes down here, so I've got two line items going on. So I've got my two grids, so to speak, tied together, so that as I navigate through the orders, my uh, order details are also updating. And that way I can work and stay focused on what I'm working on. That's a good thing. So um, you'll notice too, I've got company and order duplicated. So I could go into my summary and I could say, don't show me the second company and order. If I wanted to, I could take those off. I'm gonna leave them on for right now, uh, but we should be good leaving them there for now. All right, now we wanna go in and we want to mark our things as updatable. So I'm gonna come into my order detail, go to properties, and did I not click on my order detail here? Properties, do, 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 do. And uh, watch this, I clicked on the wrong thing. There we go. So I was clicking on the query. I wanted to click on the summary here. So I'm going to change the caption of my summary to just be order detail so that I remember where it's at. And I need to check this updatable checkbox. Once I do that, you'll notice there's a column here that says prompt. And what that prompt does is says, okay, well, what fields can be updated inside of this dashboard? So I can control what fields can be updated by the BAQ so that I can keep people from misusing the BAQ, but also in the dashboard, I could limit that down. So maybe I only want to let the user uh, change the part number or change the quantity because of security restrictions. They can only update the quantity, not the unit price, things like that. So you can limit things down at the dashboard level, even though the BAQ allowed for those to be updated. So you may want to have different dashboards for different levels of users, for example. So I'm going to go ahead and click the update all here, and that will check the prompt checkbox for all of those columns that can be updated. Now you'll notice because we didn't allow the update on the order head company and order head order num, those cannot be turned on to be updated. So they're all set to go that way. Now I'm going to go over to my updatability tab over here. Notice I've got my multi dirty row and allow add new. You cannot change these. These come from your BAQ. So if your BAQ allowed multiple rows to be updated, this will be checked. If it allowed the add new, this will be checked. You can't change those inside of the dashboard. You change those inside of the BAQ. So that's why you want to be aware uh, where those are coming from. If they're not set the right way, go back to your BAQ and you can do uh, you can update that as well. All right. And let's hit OK here. And let's come down to our, I think our order was one of these last guys here. I should have ordered by order number, shouldn't I? There we go. Let's scroll all the way down. Come on. There we go. So I can come down to 5397 doesn't have any order rows because we just created those as new orders. We didn't give them any rows. Now I've got an item inside of 539, uh, 5394. So I could come in here and I want to, uh, of course I'm doing this all whacked out because live demos, they throw you off or in your mental ability some days. So let's go ahead, uh, I saved my changes, and now I want to actually deploy my dashboard, and when I'm deploying it, I can test it, and that's how I can test my updates in here. So I'm going to go over Tools, Deploy Dashboard. I always check Deploy Smart Client Application, and then I'll hit Test Application. And that's going to bring up my dashboard as an application that I can test with. I've sorted by order number. I'm gonna come down to the bottom here. And I believe this was our order that had Fred's test part. So now I can actually add inside of, uh, I'm typing at the same time, there we go. And let's change our doc unit price to 3.5. When you do this, now you wanna hit your save button and this will actually update the database. And we can see that open with, Sales order tracker, our doc unit price should be 3.5. 
and my part description should now say Fred's Test 3 for eMug. So I'll give it just a second for that tracker to come up. Go over to our lines. Fred's Test 3 for eMug, and our unit price is 3.5. So I can use this dashboard to easily update records as I navigate between uh, my order detail lines, for example. I just have to remember to go in and hit the save. Now there is also a multi-threaded save. Sorry, tried to show it there. So if I've got uh, multiple records, I did a whole bunch of updates inside of this dashboard. The multi-threaded save is actually going to kick off multiple threads and do updates concurrently. And you can control the batch size for those threads. So you can say, hey, I want uh, to do things in batches of five and I want four threads. That means I'm doing basically 20 updates at a shot and that should make things go faster. So kind of similar to the DMT where you can have multiple tabs to update uh, things at the same time, you can do that same type of idea inside of a dashboard. So I've tested my dashboard. Uh, one thing I like to keep in mind is whatever your columns are inside of your dashboard, whatever size they are, that's how they're going to be deployed. Same with this dashboard size. So if you wanna do any resizing of columns, so the things look better or they line up better. Maybe I wanted my companies to line up uh, between the two grids. You wanna make sure you do that inside of your dashboard uh, when you do the deployment. So I'm gonna hit close here. I'll go back to my deploy dashboard. Now, I just tested the application. I didn't actually deploy it yet. So I'll come down here, click my deploy, and that will actually build the assembly and put it out uh, so that it can be used. So at this point, I'll hit OK, and I'm back at my dashboard development. Now, once I've deployed, this is a perfect time to do file, export da dashboard definition, or export definition and BAQs. The reason you want to do that, again, put it into source control so that you can see what's changing. You've got your backup copy outside of the database. You've got source control for history. So those are good things to do. So I've developed my dashboard. Now I need to put this onto a menu. Now, I'm logged in as manager. Manager doesn't have access to uh, the menu. So I'm going to come over to my other instance of Epicor where I've logged in as the Epicor system admin. And I will come over to menu maintenance, which actually might be in one of my recents here, menu maintenance. And I've created a menu called Iowa EUG EMUG for this testing purpose. So I'm going to click on that menu and we're going to create a menu item for this new dashboard. So I'll come up to new, new menu. I'll give it a menu ID of EMUG02. And we'll give this a title of EMUG dashboard. We'll give it a position of 20 so it goes down there. For the program type, if it's an updatable dashboard, you wanna make sure you choose dashboard assembly, okay? There's also a dashboard runtime. You wanna make sure you do dashboard assembly. Then in our dashboard dropdown, we can drop that down and I have to find my dashboard in here. Uh, I probably just scrolled right past it and didn't even notice it. It's gonna be one of those days, updatable orders. There we go. I want this available for all companies, so I'll check that box, hit save, and that will save my menu changes. So I'm going to close menu maintenance. I'll minimize the Epicor manager. I'm going to come back to my home screen, and I'm gonna try this. Uh, I'm going to try to change users. And of course I chose the wrong one because they switched this up in 10.2.600 on me for, I'm used to 10.2.500. So let me log back in as manager, manager, and I'll have that go. And while that's reloading, I uh, do want to point something out about the change user that I noticed during testing. And that is if you change users, uh, it doesn't appear that the security flows through with the changing of the users. So during testing, I had changed from manager, to Epicor, and my homepage actually stayed as my manager user. It didn't change to the Epicor user. And when I tried to do a menu search, I couldn't bring up menu maintenance. It was like uh, I was still 
under the security context of that manager user. I also tried it logged in as Epicor and switching over to the manager. It seemed like it kept my Epicor permissions. So if you are, if you as an administrator or a debugger, if you go out and you are logged into somebody's computer, instead of doing the change user, at least with this version uh, that I'm running here, which I think is dot four of 600, and I've seen this in other versions, previous versions of Epicor as well, uh, I actually advocate don't do the change user unless you're changing to yourself. Actually close Epicor bring it back up and log in as that new user, you'll be sure to get that security context. So I'm going to go to my menu. I'm going to go to my Iowa eMug here, and here's my eMug dashboard. If I click on that, it'll run my dashboard by default. I've sorted by orders. I'm gonna scroll down to the last few orders here. Uh, we'll go to, I think this was my guy that I had changed. So we'll change this to $4. Uh, and we'll order 20 of them, and we'll call this test number four, and I'll do my save. So unlike the BAQ, you don't do an update, you do a save here. I'll right-click on the order, open with Sales Order Tracker. We'll go to our line. I should just go to lines over here. Uh, you'll see it updated to test number four. Order quantity is 20, and our unit price is four. So we're keeping the system in check. Now, because we're using the business objects to update the database, all of those rules, any BPMs you have that fire based on an update or a get new or anything on those sales orders, order lines, order details, uh, those are all still going to fire and be effective. So you're keeping things uh, consistent. We're not sidestepping any of the business objects. We're not sidestepping security. We're not sidestepping any of your BPMs that you've got written. So even though this is an updatable dashboard, it's different than using the order entry, but you're still getting all the power and functionality that Epicor gave you with the order entry. All those things will still be enforced inside of your updatable dashboard. All right, uh, that kind of takes me through where I wanted to go. And I see that I've got a whole bunch of questions here. Boy, howdy, somehow I lucked out in the question area. It's awesome. Let me see if I can expand this out and see what's going on here. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry, trying to... Th uh, Calvin, it looks like you may have already answered some of these or... Or no. Uh, I didn't turn around and... Uh mark the ones that had already been answered, assign the ones that you'd already taken care of, and popped up the ones I didn't see any unless it's sent directly to you. Okay, so let me go through this. Those are stump the chump items. And uh, does paste insert update work with an updatable dashboard? And that's from Mike. Um, I'll be honest, Mike, it's, very, it's supposed to. Uh, you do have a right click. Uh, paste insert, paste update. In my test, and it could be the way that I set it up, I actually tried to do a copy to Excel, uh, do some updates, paste it back in. It did not work for me, but again, it could be something how I set my BAQs up. I didn't dig into it very far. You also have under actions, uptake from Excel, which is supposed to be able to allow you to load in an Excel file uh, and update the database. And again, it could have been the way that I've set my dashboard up because I've got multiple BAQs going, uh, I may have confused the dashboard and it did it wrong. So I think you're supposed to be able to do it, uh, but it didn't work for me while I was putting this demo together. If anybody has a different experience, uh, go ahead and uh, insert your comments here. I'd appreciate it. All right, any other questions? or if I missed anything, uh, please let me know, and I will. Hasso, actually, do you have experience with that? Yes, sir. So, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, so uh, you, you so on a dashboard, you can do a paste insert. You, sh you shouldn't do a paste update. Uh, usually they recommend you can do a paste insert, but the grid has to be empty. Otherwise, it kind of messes things up. So if you open up a dashboard and you don't refresh, you can do a right-click and paste insert. 
or use the epic recommended way, which is the, using the Excel uptake, which is under actions. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. So you should be able to paste insert and even paste update. But the problem is if you have uh, the problem with paste update is um, if you have, let's say, a thousand records and you're trying to update uh, five rows in the haystack, it, it'll go from top to bottom. You're going to update the wrong records. So and what and what I found out is if you do a paste insert, Epic will check if that record exists and it will actually do an update on it. So if you want to update a record that's like in the middle of the grid, you just do a paste insert. It will look like it added another record, but it will merge it. And then you just refresh and it kind of did an update for you. Uh, at, you don't have to go in order then. So. And Carol Hines says she was able to get the paste insert working as well. So it is possible. I just screwed it up on my demo. <laughs> Uh, Arno Butler, non-updatable formatting BAQ question. Okay, I have a BAQ with few numeric quantity fields. In my BAQ design view, I do not have any decimals in these fields. However, I created a dashboard and published it for others to view, but two columns are always showing me eight decimals, all zeros. The fields in question are order detail order quantity and order rel selling requested quantity. All my formats have the same format, but the dashboard it still shows eight decimals no matter what I do. Any thoughts? And I think uh, in your BAQ, you can set that format field. And I think you can also do that inside of the designer for the dashboard. Let me see if I can bring that up here on this dashboard. EMUG. Orders. Chwing, chwing, chwing. So if I go update, updatable orders, come over to order detail, properties, uh, watch me be wrong, you can't do it on the dashboard because I don't have my format here, uh, but you can do the format inside of the BAQ. So the BAQ itself, if I flip over to the BAQ, query ID starts with EMUG, let's go to order detail, I come over to Query Builder, Display Fields. You should be able, for example, this update quantity, uh, you could specify instead of, it may show eight or nine nines after here, after the decimal, you should be able to trim that back to one or two or what you're looking for and it should fix it. And that should flow through to the dashboard as well. And Arno says he did the format in his BAQ and it works in the BAQ, but not in the dashboard, of course. Uh, Correct. When you pull the BAQ into the dashboard, it's still going to fold the field formats from the database. What you would do is then personalize your dashboard to only show so much in the column and then save that as your layout that you roll out to the users. There you go, Arno. Okay, any other questions out there? Or again, if I miss something, please retype it and let me know. Okay. The resounding sound of silence, woo -hoo! All right. <laughs> uh, did I use a BPM because this was transactional data from Carol Hine? Um, I actually use the BPM because that's the Epicor preferred way of doing the update is to use that uh, BPM. Uh, the other way that they suggest is also using that uh, Service Connect workflow, but I don't do much with Service Connect. So that's why I'm usually choosing the BPM on there. Uh, Hasso, do you have any other experience or additions on that? Well, uh, I usually, my rule of thumb is that I use the BAQ if it's kind of in the company, if I have to cross companies and uh, then I kind of go service connect route. Um, otherwise it's kind of a little overkill because you can do all of it in the BPM. And also you can also call other business objects. If you go to the uh, update, uh, updatable BAQ designer under update, um, there's gonna be, you're, you're probably familiar with this, there's gonna be a BPM directives configuration so as long as you don't touch the base, you can do the pre and the post. Uh, then you can also just do, you can add a BPM. Uh, for example, when you update a field, you could raise a BPM saying, is this field valid and throw an error. 
you could, uh, so as you can see, uh, the updated will be a queue will draw all of those uh, BPM events, and you can add BPMs to it for this specific BAQ. And so, if you if you need to use another uh, business object, you could add it uh, under under here. So you don't necessarily have to go to Service Connect. You're not really just limited. Uh, and, and one thing you could uh, do, Fred, if you go, uh, can you expand the order detail node on the bottom left, right there in front of your mouse? Yep. Let's just look at the base one. So every time Fred messed with the uh, uh, column mapping, it actually just uh, regenerated this BPM. So hit the design. There's just no picture there. So hit design. So you could technically build it, and you can kind of see what Epic, how Epicor is doing things. And there's going to be code in there in the order implementation. So if you added this here, and and yep. So you can kind of also see what Epic was actually doing behind the scenes as you're adding those. Uh, you know how you added your uh, customer nom and stuff. It should all be in here, and you can kind of use DLLs and reference other objects in here, and use uh, even BPM forms. If you you can even make BPM forms pop up and request special data, and so it's very flexible. All right. So and. Marta asks, uh, is there an advantage of doing an updatable BAQ over DMT? Uh, the BA, updatable BAQ or the updatable dashboard, you've got the UI. Uh, the DMT would be better if you're doing several, several records uh, that you need to update all in one shot. So I would, like, like if I were going to update 50 or 100 records, I would probably choose the DMT over the updatable dashboard, updatable BAQ. You can also use the updatable BAQ. Say you have an inventory clerk that you want to give them access to the warehouse and the bin on the part record, but nothing else. You can make an updatable BAQ just for that for them. And then Jason Hatfield, have you experienced issues with updatable BAQs and any of the job tables? I personally have not. Uh, Jason goes on, we try and update a field on the job head table, but it's extremely slow and cumbersome given we are updating 900 jobs. Well, if you're updating 900 jobs, it would be a little bit slower, <laughs> yes. Uh, if you're updating just one item, it should go fairly quickly, but the, obviously the more you have to update, the it's still gotta run through all those uh, business rules and things on the objects uh, to get the updates out there. Uh, Simon, you can also create a BAQ just with calculated fields and modify the update BPM to do things like Hasso mentioned. Excellent, thank you. Uh, so, and Jason, go ahead. Uh, actually, that's I have a good example for that. So we have sometimes customizations and uh, somebody wants to write to a UNC path and they added in on the customization side, they added the customization layer code. The problem with that is you don't wanna manage Windows permissions. So you could add a, you could create an update will be a queue with a calculated field that says, let's say, file name, and then one field called content, and then you call the updatable BAQ from uh, your customization layer, and then under the BPM a tab right there, you actually uh, take that and write it out to the path you want. Uh, but remember, the updatable BAQ will run as the service account on the server, so it has all these permissions that you don't necessarily want to give users. So that's, I, I think, kind of what we're using uh, calculated fields for, a good example. So you could write to the server path without having to manage or give the entire company permissions to certain folders. Okay. And Jason followed up with his job head update usually takes 15 to 20 minutes uh, for those 900 jobs. That's actually doing 45 jobs a minute. That's, I don't think that's too slow. Calvin or Hasso, do you have input there? You guys may be better at the jobs than I am. No, I think uh, the, the you kind of have to look at, do you have any other BPMs running? So uh, what I found out is that, um, let's say the update, because this will call you update EXT. And in some cases you update EXT, will also call the update. So just make sure you don't have any other BPMs or data directives. You just kind of see, see how it performs uh, without any BPMs to turn on. It may be just a bottleneck in a BPM that you're not expecting because you're kind of working here. You, you're not expecting these other things to fire, but they actually do fire. Could Jason possibly yeah. script the DMT? If you, if, I don't know how often you, Jason runs this, but he could maybe script the DMT update. 
maybe they haven't gone to a class before and they have them, you know, off hours. And also the other thing that I noticed is if you uh, don't do the multi-row update, like you have uh, on the general properties tab, Fred, uh, I do have some, uh, actually, as a matter of fact, I do have a job table. If I do not do, if I don't do a uh, multiple row update, it's, it takes a while. Um, okay. Also check that. I would think it may be easier to use the BAQ to obtain the job data that you're looking for, make the changes with your BAQ using calculated fields, but use the DMT to mass update it back into the job system. Uh, that kind of takes us to the top of the hour, which is uh, going to get us over to Jason here. Uh, Vaughn does say we use updatable for date changes. Takes maybe four minutes for 300 records. Uh, so you do have the capability. It should go pretty quickly there. Um, just to give you some feedback, Jason. Uh, so let me switch presenters over to Jason Claggett.